I really like knitting machinery. It is like the perfect mix of my engineering background and my absolute love for fiber crafts. I spent a lot of time making up patterns on my vintage flatbed machine. I'm always keeping my eye out to see if I can find more vintage and antique pattern books that I can use to use my machines. While I have managed to find some leaflets of patterns in English, I've come across far more vintage Japanese pattern books specifically for making knits on your home knitting machine. The only problem is I don't speak, understand, read anything in Japanese, which is why when I came across this particular book in my vintage listing perusal, I was absolutely giddy. This is Japanese for Machine Knitters by Mary Weaver, and it makes me feel so connected to machine knitters of that time because it seems like they had the same issue where, where you had a lot of these beautiful patterns coming out of Japan but couldn't really understand what they were asking you to do, which is where this resource book comes in. So I am going to be attempting to knit one of the patterns from my Japanese knitting machine pattern books, interpreting it using this Japanese for knitters guide. <laughs> So let's start by picking out a pattern to make. So maybe you're thinking of diving into a foreign language just like I did, but you're hoping for a better solution than a knitting machine manual from 1989. So I would like to introduce you to the sponsor of today's video, Babbel. Babbel is one of the top language learning apps in the world, and I have a dream of traveling to Norway to have an ultimate knitting journey and as a way to connect with people while I'm there, and maybe also hopefully read a Norwegian language knitting pattern someday. I have started to learn Norwegian using Babbel. <laughs> I've had to learn a few new languages in my life. I am not a native English speaker, so I had to learn English. I also was required to learn Spanish, and both of them did not come naturally to me. So it has been such a wonderful journey so far to have lessons that are created by actual language teachers. And it's proven to help you start speaking a new language within three weeks. Babbel has a nice selection of languages to choose from, as well as a variety of subscriptions that you can choose, including a lifetime subscription. And they are offering you 60% off of the subscription if you use the link in the description down below. Be sure to let me know what language you've decided to start learning. And thank you again so much to Babbel for sponsoring today's video. And after going through a lot of these, I actually found a design that I want to recreate, which is this one right over here. One of the nice things about having these pattern books from the 70s and 80s is even though I don't normally focus on that time period, but they themselves pulled a lot from the Victorian era through the 30s and 40s. So I feel like this pattern that I've chosen actually kind of reminds me somewhat of a 30s and 40s style. And I'm gonna make a few tweaks to make it fit a little bit more of what I think I would regularly wear. So let's go ahead and take a look at this pattern together. The entirety of the knitting pattern is confined to this one page. I think just from a first glance, because of the way that it's written, and I love how it's written, I can understand a lot right away. So there's the diagrams. I'm pretty sure we have the back, you have the front, same kind of idea. You have sleeves, and then my guess is a neckband. I can also definitely ascertain that there are two lace patterns, makes sense from the picture as well. The lace pattern on the body is separate from the lace pattern on the sleeve. There are some things, however, that I don't see and I can't understand. <laughs> so what is the gauge? There's this tiny C. I don't know what the C means, I'm confused. There's definitely some things that are missing for me from just looking at this pattern initially, which is why we are going to bring in our guide by Mary Weaver. Now I've spent some time with this guide. One of the words that we find out here is stitch. And then we get to the point where we get some diagram information, which is very helpful for me. Then the last section of the book, you get the example pattern and then how you would interpret that. That is what I'm gonna focus on to try to interpret my pattern. I think what I'm gonna do, I gotta figure out these lace charts. I don't have punch cards. I have punch cards like this 
that came with my machine. And when they feed through my machine, the hole corresponds to either, you can use this for color work or lace work. So it's either an eyelet or a contrast color. I don't have these for the patterns given. So I'm gonna have to create them. Step one though is setting up the knitting machine. It's finally set up. Oh my goodness. I, you know, it's, it's not so bad. It's just that I forget every time. So it takes a while to set up. But I'm glad it's portable and I'm glad I have the crafting space where I can set it up, but it would just be so nice because I do so many different crafts. If I had a dedicated space where I could keep a knitting machine set up, where I could keep my loom set up, where I could keep my spinning wheel set up right now, it kind of has to be like transformers. <laughs> anyway, now we have to create the pattern, the lace pattern. I showed you before that my machine came with these. However, you can also buy blank ones that you can then punch yourself. So now the only thing I have to find, there's a tool that I got with these that is specific for punching holes. Found it. Okay, so this is the hole punch specific for punching holes into these pattern blanks. So let me punch that and see if it's the right thing by testing it on my machine. So let's go ahead and punch some holes. I messed up, no! <laughs> I forgot to skip a row here. That's why I bought a whole pack of blanks, I guess. Did it again. So let me go ahead and take like a quick coffee and kuchen break and I'll be back to repunch these again. Okay, <laughs> I managed it this time. I only did one pattern repeat so I can test in the machine before I do the entirety of the pattern. So let's go ahead and get everything set up. I have to remember how to do all the casting on and things and we can test out this pattern. I thought getting the lace punch cart to work would be the hard part and but I've just reset up my knitting machine between packing it up and unpacking it and setting it up something isn't right on my knitting carriage. I'm going to spend some time seeing if I can figure something out but I don't know. I don't know. Let's see if I can't figure something out. It's working again. So it needed some cleaning, greasing. Let me go switch over to the lace carriage to test out my little lace pattern, which I've already fed into my machine. Okay, so the pattern is advancing, uh, which it wasn't doing before, but now no lace is being knit at all. So there's something going on with this particular way that I've done this pattern piece. And I thought I wouldn't get the pattern right. I didn't realize that what would be the issue is basically how I created the pattern. There's a very big difference in their thickness and their sturdiness. And I wonder if I can simulate the thickness by doing two of these. Okay, well, the two layer didn't help. I'm gonna take a sleep and think, and I'll come back in the morning, I'll let you know what I've decided or what I'm gonna try. Good morning. It is the next day. The lace work on my machine, you can get it to work, but it's very finicky. And it's always happening on one particular direction. So there's something going on with either the lace making carriage, the needles in my bed, not working well with it. So instead I thought, well, a lot of the lace patterns can also be used for color work. I did some tests, fully torn to shreds. Uh, this is where I realized that my patterning mechanism is not really working correctly anymore. Unfortunately, something really broke, but I found a way to operate it manually. You can kind of see the pattern coming out now. So that's even my hand punch card. Yesterday, my hand punch cards weren't working. Today, I figured out a way to make it work. And the next thing is making appropriate gauge swatches. So I have decided to pull out the yarns that I've decided to use for this. The main color is going to be this lovely off-white or cream white. This is yarn from an unraveled sweater. And then I really do like this green as the contrasting color. Let's get everything ready and let's get to making a gauge swatch. Thank you. 
swatch is done. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased. I'm very happy with this. The original pattern piece that I created has the pattern off to the side. What I didn't take into account and what I noticed yesterday when I was doing some tests is that that means that the pattern would be offset on my machine. And so I re-punched out a card where it is now in the middle. I think at this point, it's time for me to sit down with my pattern and convert it from the diagram and using the terms that I know to some actual stitches. I've had some thinking about what I'm doing here on my knitting machine. I got this far in knitting the back section. Looks, you know, half decent, right? But that's when I started to notice that something was going wrong on this leftmost repeat. And it's always just on one side. It started tearing through my yarn. There started to be some weird catches then on the right side as well. And I think there is something really wrong with the patterning bit on my knitting machine and or the carriage. I decided to stop about halfway through the back piece because I felt like more things were going wrong. And so by continuing to put my machine through it with like the hacks I had put in place was probably doing damage. Also, <laughs> I just did all of that with, mm, sorry, I had some hand pulled noodles and that I think is chili oil on my chin. They were very good, obviously. So because I, I would like to make something and one thing that I do know about my machine right now is without the patterning, things are working okay. So just plain knitting is fine. So I went back and I saw this pattern on the cover of this other Japanese knitting pattern magazine is in a lacy pattern but what I can do is just do a plain knit instead and do with one thread of yarn so that I get the same kind of like airy effect with a, if I use like a very open tension and we can have some contrast interest here with these bands of stripes so it's just this one piece with the stripes for the front and the back and then you sew it together down the sides you have some short row shaping here plan number two we're gonna knit this one in a plain swatch and we're gonna invert the color. So I'll do it, my off-white going into the green. <laughs> The back is off and I am halfway done with making the panels needed for this sweater. The only thing that I'm really worried about is the size of the sleeve. I don't know that that's going to fit if I'm sewing it all the way up under here. The one thing that I can think of is that I interpreted the shaping in the wrong direction. So I interpreted it like a bust dart, but when I look at the shape of that area of the sleeve on the diagram, not the diagram, but on the picture, and I think about it a little bit, if instead of creating of the volume like this, I created it in this direction, it would give me more room here and a bigger opening to fit my arm. And then I'm going to create a matching back, but I'm going to reverse the shaping to hopefully give myself enough room for my arms to fit. So let's do the matching back, I guess.
We are 100 rows into this sweater, which means that we are up to the shaping by the underarms. Now, last time I shaped it so that each row, I removed a needle out of work and I moved closer and closer towards the center, but I was worried. I don't know that that was the right call. So this time I'm gonna do the opposite. And I'm hoping it balances itself out. So basically I'm gonna work on just the right side first. I'm gonna put everything out of work except for the last 12 and then move further and further out. And then we'll do the same thing on the left hand side. I don't know if that makes sense, but we'll try it. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. So we have both panels done, front and back. We have contrasting shaping. So one of the sides has it kind of being a dart and the other one has it being a wedge. Usually when you have T-shaped pieces like this, what happens is you seam up along the sides leaving a neck hole or like the shoulder, sorry, leaving a neck hole. And then you seam up along the sides here up through the T and then your arms fit through this portion of the T. But looking at the pattern design, that would mean if that were the case, then the arm would be poking out in parallel with these stripes. It's not, it's poking down below, which means that in reality, <laughs> the sleeve bit is this part. But then if I seam up here and there, I'm gonna get like a pointy shoulder. So I'm wondering if you kind of seam up on the diagonal to make it work and then you trim away the excess. So what I might do is just take a um, like basting stitch to this and see if the way that I have created this could even work. Like, can I fit my arm through it? I'm mostly worried about the fact like, I don't know if I can, like this is, this is tiny. I don't know if I can fit my arm through that. So let me baste it together and try it on and see if that'll work. <laughs> and I'll update you with that <laughs> and we'll see where to go from there. Okay, so here is where we stand. I have this sleeve not closed, but the way it's supposed to go is that this corner is supposed to meet up with this corner. Now, can you see that this one stretches a lot further than this one? And that's because this is the one where I put in the wedge so it gets wider here. So it has an actual chance of making it across versus this one does not. I have two choices as far as I can see it. I can undo some of this seam at the underarm and use that as part of my sleeve opening. Or I can just kind of go with the way that maybe these shirts kind of usually go and close it off like a T here like this. And then this is my sleeve. The thing about that one is though, when I hold my arms like this, I don't like this. I like the idea of it kind of looking like the stripes go around in this direction instead. So I'm going to do a fit test where I undo a little bit of this and I close this off and let's see what that looks like if I can wear it that way. And I did end up opening up a little bit more room under my arm in order to make the design a little bit closer to the original one. So that is what I decided to go with and how I decided to sew up this particular sweater or blouse. Now in the past to do the seaming up that I was just talking about, I would have done it by hand. Uh, probably the least favorite part of the process, hand or machine knitting, which is why I have been keeping a keen eye out for this machine. This is what's called a linker and it's, and this one particularly is from Haig. Um, so I'm gonna try it. If it doesn't work, <laughs> I'll go back to being by hand. I'm going to troubleshoot it and make it work, but if it takes too much effort right now, I'm going to put it aside. So let's cross our fingers that it works within like the first one or two attempts. <laughs> Thank you. 
As you can probably tell, I started off quite slow when I was using my linker and I ended up being a lot faster with it as I got more comfortable. I think in shipping, some of the pieces got a little bit moved. So I spent like a good hour doing some very precise like alignment of things. I was able to watch a YouTube video of this exact same machine and someone else using it. So thank goodness it allowed me to fix what was kind of off in mine and it ended up working beautifully. I'm so happy that I have this and it works and now I can show you finally my finished blouse. This blouse definitely did not go as planned. This whole project did not go as planned, but I am glad that I did eventually get a sweater out of this. It still needs a little bit of blocking and maybe a little bit of modifications around the neckline, but I am happy with how it turned out. And this might be one on my list for a remake, although I'm pretty sure that I will get some use out of this. Thank you so much for watching. If you like videos like this, please feel free to subscribe and I'll see you very soon. Bye.